Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This is Pastor Rafael coming your way. If today is your first time you are watching me, kindly subscribe to Shalom Studies. Go to YouTube and you subscribe to the channel and be part of the family. God bless you so much, the subscribers. And today, for uh, I've been talking about raising a godly altar against evil altar. And today I want to share with you or teach you the first things you need to do to raise a godly altar. It's very, very important. If you study the Bible carefully, there are men and women who raise altars and their altars dealt with the evil powers. I have told you in a previous video, <clears throat> if you are coming from a polygamous home, if you are coming from an idol worshiping ancestral home, if you have marine attack, spiritual marriage attack, if you have witchcraft materials planted in your home, if you know your home is not that good, you have taken stock, there are some people, they can't go to the ancestral home because of the things that has been done. Now, when it comes to raising an altar, the pivot place that you need to deal with the evil powers is your ancestral home because you are part of that home. You belong to that tree. You come from that offspring. So whatever is transpiring in that home will affect you. So when you read the Bible in Judges chapter 6 verse 24, Gideon raised an altar and named the altar on that place. Then God told Gideon to go back to his ancestral home to go and destroy the bad gods of his father. We call it the idol powers of your father's house. So if you have that problem in your home, then you are welcome to this channel because I'm going to take you through the necessary things you need to raise an altar. Now, as you can see on this table, I have a frying pan, electronic frying pan. I have sea salt. I have water. I have extra virgin oil. I have honey. I have frying pan. I have uh, the extra virgin oil for, for to be used. Then I have flour wheat flour pure wheat flour so if you look at it you can just look at it all purpose flour all purpose flour you can just is it fortified wheat flour as you can see fortified wheat flour so you have to get that one now let's read something in the bible in exodus 29 verse verse uh, 2 exodus 29 verse 2 in this channel, I've told you whatever I teach here, I bring out the practicality of the Bible. We are tired of the storytelling. We are tired of this pastor telling us John 3, 16, and God died for us, and so and so forth. We need... The one question I kept on asking is, why did Abraham stay long? Why did those people stay long than in our generation? It's because they caught the revelation. They were obedient to the voice of God. They listened. So in this, our generation, my responsibility is to help us to be able to go back to what was done. Jesus Christ made a, a very important statement. He said, I have not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law, which is the Old Testament and the New Testament together. Any Christian who will tell you he doesn't believe in the Old Testament need to be born again. You cannot chase your grandfather because you have your, 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 your parents. When you say the, the Old Testament is not important, it means you are chasing your grandmother and your grandfather because you have your, your parents. Whilst it is your grandparents who gave birth to your, 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 your parents. So it's very, very important. So now I have my flower. You put as, as much as, depending on how many pieces of the body of Christ you want. This one, as I'm preparing, I'll be using it after I have finished preparing it. So I have poured my flour. Then I have my honey. Now, so let's read. He said, Exodus 29 verse 2. He said, from the finest wheat flour, make a round loaves without yeast. As you can see on this table, I don't have yeast here. Why did God order Moses not to add yeast? Because yeast brings pollution to the body of Christ. The body of Christ is pure. 
there's no there shouldn't be any contamination and everything you see here biblically has their impact as connection to jesus christ so he said without yeast thick loaves without yeast and with olive oil mixed in and dye and thyme loaves without yeast and brush with olive oil so now what we are going to do let me put this thing somewhere what we are going to do we have our our flour of course i have washed my hand so before you do it make sure you wash your hand now the first thing you had some pinch of salt not too much just a pinch of salt what you are preparing you can also eat it now let me tell you this is the original pure way of preparing the body of christ biblically the original pure way of preparing the body of christ now the honey in my hand represents the word of god if you read psalm 119 verse 103 he said how sweet are your words they are sweeter than honey so then when you finish so we have our oil we have our flour we have our wheat flour we have our honey the salt is inside now when you finish what you are supposed to do is to mix them together i'm using my hand because it makes it comfortable and faster for me you can use whatever you have at home if you if you can't trust your hands but i trust my hand because i have washed it and it's clean now i'll add water just add systematically don't just add too much if not it will get soaked so just add it systematically as you prepare the dough if you want as you are preparing it you are praying speaking to it now why why will you use this one you are going to speak to the land the bible says in corinthians he said anyone who eats the body of christ will not die there are so many things that has been buried in the land in the ancestral home there are witchcraft that has been buried there are human sacrifice that has been buried there are demonic entities there are demonic objects that has been buried so as you put the body of christ there you are you are silencing them and you are making the body of christ speak against any evil altar any satanic sacrifice any human blood what makes it more important is what the body the the prayer you pray now one important thing i don't have on the table is the blood of jesus now if you want to prepare the blood of jesus get non-alcoholic beverage non-alcoholic beverage when you get it you put some in in the, in the water bottle like this reduce the water like this and pour some of the uh, beverages in it non alcoholic don't use alcohol don't use 75 percent 90 percent my friend you get drunk and you begin to abuse god you get drunk and you begin to say god is naked don't do it so use what non-alcoholic beverage then you pour some you pick a pinch of salt add to it add some extra virgin oil to the what the the wine you are preparing then you pray using leviticus 17 verse what verse 11 he said for i have given unto you he said for the life of the flesh is in the blood and i've given unto you for the atonement of your soul on the altar so every altar if you want it to be powerful if you want it to manifest what you need is what you need the blood of jesus you need the blood of jesus you need the blood of jesus to make it more what powerful every altar if you are raising it you can raise as many as you want in the four corners of your uh, your your house in the four corners of your ancestral home and every altar must have a name i have just posted a video on the name naming your altar how important it is so you can raise as many as you wish if you study the bible abraham everywhere every five meters you will raise an altar
He will raise an altar and he will name it. Now, the door is ready. The door is ready. Here, we call it chapati. The door is ready. So, I'm going to use the electronic frying pan. You see, the scripture we read, it said, brush it with oil, with extra virgin oil. So, we are doing the biblical way of preparing the body of Christ. And what I'm teaching you, you can prepare it at home, have it with your children. You can break the body of Christ at any time you want. You can break the body of Christ at any time you want, before you sleep, in the morning, before you go to work, you do what? You partake of the body of Christ. This one, you can do it at home. So now, I have done. I'm, I have put it on the electronic frying pan. I'm going to put it, just eat it, eat it up small, then I fry it. Then I fry it. So I'm making the body of Christ. This is one of the things you will need. Very important thing you will need in raising a godly altar. What you are doing, you are silencing every evil altar on the land. Every demonic forces attacking you. These things are very powerful. Also, never forget when you are raising the altar. Make sure there is an angel of the Lord who will be a custodian. A custodian simply means there should be an angel of the Lord who will guard the altar for you. Who will guard the altar for you, as you can see. So, I can rub it again with the extra virgin oil. Make sure you have an angel. We have three types of angels. I don't want you to mention any angel you are not sure. You don't know their characters. So these three angels I will share with you. We have Archangel Raphael, Archangel Michael, and Archangel Gabriel. So you see how it is. Now, Archangel Raphael is the angel of healer, the angel of protection, the angel of for traveling. If you are traveling, you can ask him to guide you and to also protect you, to give you a good journey mercy, that your going and your coming should be safe. If you study the Bible, God gave them angelic angelic protection in whatever or wherever they were going. God gave the children of Israel angels to protect them. So if you want protection in your home and you raise the altar, you can use Archangel Raphael to protect your home, to grant you healing for protection. is a protector of children also as well. It's a protector of business also as well. So he has different work he does. So this is one. Let the camera turn to for you to see. Then I'm doing the second one. I will have four body of Christ. So Archangel Raphael is the angel of what healing the angel of protection. Then when you come to Archangel Gabriel, the angel, the angel who is in charge of water, he guides and protects water. Actually, it deals with marine kingdom. So if you have that attack, there are homes where the parents have initiated all the children, the family into marine kingdom. The water can silence them. If you are scared of going to your ancestral home, what you can do, send someone to get the soil from your ancestral home, bring it, let me know, and I will help you. I will take you through raising the godly altar. 
And the most important thing, when you raise the altar and you finish, you are supposed to stand on it. When you stand on it, because you are, you are from that family, you are standing on it to separate yourself. You are separating yourself from the consequences of the evil altars your ancestors raised. There are families where they cannot get married. There are divorces everywhere. Children are nuisance. Families, aunties, uncles are not well off. Things are not moving in that family. You need to raise an altar. You need to raise an altar. You need to raise an altar. That is the only way you can be able to deal with those evil powers. Those evil powers. So get soil. Or go travel to your ancestral home. Be like Gideon. God ordered Gideon to go to his father's house to go and destroy that bad God the father has raised. That is the only way Gideon was able to bounce back to life. He came back to his destiny. God restored. So if you have not destroyed those evil powers, they will attack you. They will deal with you. They will fight you. God ordered Gideon to go and do it. If not, Gideon will go to the battlefield and God will be with him, but the demonic forces will also contend with him and fight him. And he may end up losing God and losing the battle. So God told him, go back, go back and deal with the things in your father's house. So this one is also ready. I put the next one. You rub it with Oh yeah, make sure all the time you rub it with oil according to the Bible. What the Bible said, it said, rub it with extra virgin oil. Oil. And make sure you do it accordingly. You do it accordingly. When you do that, you are following the biblical way of making the right body of Christ, the items you need to raise a godly altar. The item to raise a godly altar. If you don't have this kind of electronic frying pan, you can use this frying pan. You can use this one. But make sure you get a roller. Get a roller to roll this. You have to roll it to make, make it flat. I'm using this one because it's making it flat already for me. It's making it flat. But if you want to get it flat, get a rolling board. Get a rolling board and roll it flat, round flat. Rub oil on it, then you put it in your frying pan and then you fry it. Fry it nicely. Fry it nicely then. It becomes the body of Christ. Fry it nicely. This one you can eat it as I said. You can be breaking the body of Christ with your family. You can break the body of Christ with your family. And the most important thing, don't forget, when you finish, pray over them. Invoke the power of God into it. Pray over them. Make sure they are concentrated. Now, this one, the last one, rub oil on it. Rub oil around. If you want, as you are doing it, you are praying. Lord, I charge and I release the power of God into this body, into this bread. I turn it into the body of Christ. I release the healing power, the cleansing power the deliverance power, the life of Christ in his body. I invoke it into this bread right now. As I prepare it, I turn into the body of Christ. Wherever it will enter, wherever, whoever will eat it, let the person receive life. As I'm using it to raise a godly altar, let the earth, let the land receive life. Let my ancestral home receive life. Whatever killing people will not kill me. The spirit of poverty in my ancestral home, whatever the ancestors did to initiate us, as I raise this altar, as I prepare the body of Christ, 
I release the Spirit of God. I release life into it right now in Jesus' name. Then you can continue praying. You can continue praying. Now, when you finish, this one is also ready. So I am done. I am done with the body of Christ. Now they are done. I have four pieces which I'm going to use for myself. Which I'm going to use for myself. I have four pieces as you can see. I'm going to use for myself. So what you need to do, pray over it, consecrate it to be holy. Now when you are going to raise altar, when you are going to raise altar, you need these things. Honey, sea salt, oil, body of Christ, and the blood of Jesus. Let me repeat again. The blood of Jesus, get a bottle of water. Can the camera go up? Let it go up. Lift it. Uh, the, get a bottle of water. Get a non-alcoholic drink. It shouldn't be alcoholic. Get non-alcoholic drink. Pour some, reduce the water to this level. Pour some good amount into it. Pick a pinch of salt, add to it. Add olive oil. Don't add honey. You need sea salt, olive oil, water, and non-alcoholic beverage. Then you mix them together. Then you shake it. You pray using Leviticus chapter 17, 11. Release the healing power into the blood of Jesus. Whatever you want the blood to do, any good thing you want it to do, release it to fill it. Then when you finish, you cover it and shake it. You are ready. You have your blood of Jesus. God bless you so much. If you have not subscribed to the channel, kindly subscribe to Shalom Studies. God bless you. See you. Shalom.